Yep. Some people might wonder why there's over 30,000 separate tiles rather than just a sheet of tile, but, but in fact, uh, the spacecraft temperature differences uh, are so tremendous that the aluminum skin underneath uh, contracts and expands uh, perhaps several times throughout the, uh, the space flight from launch right on through re-entry. And if it were one sheet of tile, that tile would tend to, or have to Very expand with the aluminum, and, uh, and it doesn't. So it would tend to crack. Therefore, and, you have blocks of tiles. And no two tiles are the same thickness, Gene. They're computer coated and created. Uh, they're aerodynamically a part of the air aircraft skin. Uh, and if they're all the same thickness, uh, the vehicle would weigh much, much more than it does now and be far more cumbersome. Okay, Frank, Jules and uh, Gene, thank you. Me, yes, go ahead, Gene. You had something else to add? Where you were, when we saw the Big Bird come in, uh, it's, it's been uh, uh, called many things, as you said, but as it came in, it, 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 you could almost hear a roar of engines that didn't exist. You could almost, almost feel the airplane come through the, uh, through the final phases of the atmosphere just before landing, and, and uh, I've got to tell you, it was pretty from here. I hope it was beautiful from where you were. Oh, it certainly was. We caught sight of it just as it came in down low over the horizon. We're replaying it for you here now. It, it and was, what a sight. And it looked so, just so steady, you know, so steady as a rock as it came in there. Well, it was, it was almost poetic in a sense. It was just like a big eagle spread out there, just, just, just gliding with, uh, with ease and confidence to its final touchdown point. Yeah, I, don't, what a moment. I don't believe the nose or the tail or anything wavered a moment. It was like it was on a string or a track someone filled out here uh, in a desert for it to, to, to land on. Well, three cheers for the tiles. And even the computers were speaking to one another today, so everything went well. We'll continue with our coverage of the mission of Columbia after this message and a word from our local stations. On the deck, excuse me. Well, heck, maybe y'all want to stay in there then. I think you got something. John's still working on that old program. He was down the lower equipment bay. That's a Roger. term from an Apollo spacecraft. What, the equipment bay? The lower equipment bay. Oh. Yeah. Uh, could I ask you a question here? Does that airlock have an info valve on it? Say that again. Does the airlock have an info valve on it? What are they talking about, Joe? You know, this yes. seems to. I uh, will check on that. About the oh, airlock, which is the uh, place where the suits are stored for EVA. I, I don't know why he's curious about it. Kind of late in the game to be asking about the airlock. It's yeah, I suspect they're relieved they didn't have to get in those suits. The in this says zero. Roger. And uh, we've lost data temporarily, uh, Columbia. Oh, we can verify everything's copacetic. Okay, good to hear. Copacetic. I'll turn back on CRT2 just so I can look at my uh, systems. Um, did did, did y'all did y'all get the DFI data? You think? That's firm, uh, and uh, we see no problem with turning uh, CRT2 back on. Is that the recorder they were having some trouble with earlier, Joe Kerwin? Yes, uh, Capcom uh, said they thought they did get the data. He also told Crip he could turn one of his uh, television display screens back on. Crip is curious about uh, some of the measurements. Yeah. They must be getting fairly antsy by now. It seems to me they've got five or ten minutes more before they can get out. They ran through that uh, checklist like a herd of horses and are uh, <laughs> scratching at the inside of the hatch. What kinds of medical examinations will they give them? Are, are, does uh, a flight of this duration, and now I'm asking you as a, as a, as a medical doctor, mm -hmm. uh, does a flight of this duration make odd things happen to the body? Our suspicion is that it that they only have a chance to begin happening and that you won't find out very much. Now, they'll draw a bunch of blood because they <laughs> want to look at the beginnings of the blood loss process which occurs in spaceflight. Uh, they want to check the heart rate, uh, uh, blood pressure hey, Columbia, Houston, to see whether they've lost any the fluid. They want to weigh them. The, uh, Other than one, that, it's uh, going to be pretty superficial. Hatches. The crew is obviously in good shape. Uh, when we get to longer flights, we'll do more detailed medical work. Will people um, grow larger or smaller or age more quickly or more slowly in, in long trips in space? 
uh, as far as growing physically larger, that your backbone unloads, and I think that happens within a day or two. So they may uh, be a little bit taller than they were when they went. Well, they were at deorbit burn, but by the time they uh, rounded the corner here at Edwards, I think they'd been scrunched back to normal size. Jams all your bones <laughs> together. That's right. You, you, uh, you, you can't keep that advantage. But uh, the, the medical casualness about uh, flights of, uh, of this nature, to me, make a tremendous contrast with the, uh, the great anxiety and uh, interest with which the Gemini crews were brought back. Well, and it wasn't very long ago, really in historical terms, that we were asking ourselves what would happen to chimpanzees when they went up. And that's, that's in right. fact why they went up. That's right. Because nobody could measure what weightlessness or what do they call it now, micro, microgravity. Microgravity, they, yeah. Because uh, everything has a little gravity, Joe. Everything in the universe has some sort of little trace of gravity in it. Uh, not really. What they're saying is that uh, due to spacecraft motion, you can't avoid something like uh, one ten thousandth to one ten millionth of a G. Right. I see. Well, they look in pretty. They sound like in pretty good shape, and they looked in terrific shape before they left. Young is fifty years old, and Crippen is forty-three years old. Let's hear it for the fifties. <laughs> <laughs> Especially in that kind of shape, and with that kind of a touchdown, with Commander John Young at the controls. We'll be back with our continuing coverage of the successful launch and now landing of the Columbia Space Orbiter after this.